everyone, and welcome to Rezocast episode 59. This is Lego, and I've got with me Hope, Triton, Mana, and our special guest this week, Triple <laughs> Wreck. Thanks so much for coming back to the podcast, man. How, how's your week been, dude? Uh, it's It's been a good week. Um, I had, uh, it was kind of unfortunate timing because I was like in the middle of getting like two brand new computers set up like as Destiny 2 is launching on PC. So I basically spent the like the full week that like D2 had released on PC just like troubleshooting that because like I ran into a bunch of tech issues. Uh, Um, So I haven't really played that much. Like I'm finally, I have two characters now. I haven't hit 305 on either of them yet, but um, I'm I'm now like trying to catch up. But uh, yeah, the time wasn't great for that, but um, I got everything set up. We're good. And I've been enjoying uh, getting some streaming in and uh, playing the PC version. Very nice, man. Well, we're excited to hear all about it, dude. And I feel like I'm right there with you and not playing that much PC, but it's just because I'm playing PC on a MacBook Pro. And you know, it just <laughs> it just doesn't work that great. Wow. But, it, but it works, which is incredible. I can't believe it's optimized that well. Um, so that's there how my go. week's been going. I actually tried mouse and keyboard for the first time in like 15 years. Like the last time I played it was like Battlefield 1942 or something like that. So I'm trying to get into the zone again. But it's really fun to play a different Destiny a different way, you know. So right. I'm really enjoying that. Hope, how's your week been, man? Uh, about the same. I did pull myself away from PUBG and a little Fortnite to play some Destiny again. Finally. Um, so you know that's been. I played a little on PS4 and PC. Uh, I still don't have a character through the story yet on PC because I suck. Um, but I got some PvP time in with you know you and Sam and some other people and. Oh, that was really fun. Um, I want to get to the PvP. And finish the story on PC, but it's just so hard to get through it again. So, I don't know. We'll see, but... <laughs> Come uh, on! I'm, I'll get there, I promise. One of these days. I, I streamed, though, for the first time in God knows how long. I'm going to try to oh start doing gosh. that more than once nice. a year. So. <laughs> what I about you, Mina? Again. Yeah, I, I tried. It only uh, took three months. I have actually finally got my character up. I've been playing uh, D2 on PC for the, over the weekend, actually. Like, I... I alongside of Fortnite and everything else, of course. There's so many different games out right now. I'm literally, yeah. my brain is scrambled on what to play. I don't know how to do my schedule or anything. But uh, <laughs> I played Trials of Osiris. I was all up in PvP and all that. Destiny 2 is the hardest game I've ever played on mouse and keyboard. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think a lot of people, for some reason, are surprised. I'm just like, I started off on Battle Royales. And they are a completely different pace, Destiny, like than Destiny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think I should have started on Overwatch. Now thinking back to mm-hmm. it, maybe Overwatch would have got me into it. But dude, tried to get good on mouse and keyboard and Destiny 2 is just so frustrating. I'm so tempted to just to be done with it and switch to controller or something, you know? I'm just like Don't give hard. in. <laughs> <laughs> this close. This close, man. I'm just like, dude, it's such it's so fast paced compared to battle royales. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Even just like moving like between controller. Cause I started with controller just to get used to it on PC and just moving to a mouse and keyboard is this instant shock of like, Oh my gosh, I can move. I can move so fast now. I can turn around instantly. Like it's like another world, you know? And so I could see how like, it's just so it's crazy. Shocking. Yeah. Just going back and forth because when you do plug in your controller, you can actually go back and forth just seamlessly mm-hmm. on the spot to test out different weapons. And I don't know, it's it's a brand new world. <laughs> it's, All right, Aladdin. it's really hard to go back <laughs> in and forth between the two because uh, uh, I got I got COD World War II. Uh, I just yeah. went through the campaign and you know switching over to controller. I I literally I felt like like there was something wrong with me. Like my brain didn't mm-hmm. work. I, I picked up the controller and I, I just felt like, oh, so these are the people I make fun of all the time that can't <laughs> aim. <'Cause, laughs> what am I doing? I, you, you know, you get used to it. Like after like, you know, half an hour, I was like, all right, it's fine. But it's, it is rough. And, and for people that aren't used to mouse and keyboard, it, it can be, you know, it can be a jarring experience. But I do feel like if they stick with it, it won't take them that long to kind of grow accustomed to it. And, and you will you know, be able to do stuff that you can't do on a controller. And it's really satisfying once, you know, you're able to pull that stuff off. So uh, it, it's it's been, you know, as much as like I, I love, you know, the frame rate and the field of view and all the stuff, but like the mouse and keyboard really transforms the experience. And uh, I've been enjoying the game like a significantly amount more just because of that. So it's uh, it's been nice. 
Absolutely. We're excited to get in all that with you. Uh, Triton, how was your week, man? Well, my week was pretty solid doing the uh, faction token yes. uh, thing to get the <laughs> doing max that run like through the door every hours. single time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but I did the party chats. I think, I mean, the third character was rough though, because if you've been in the party chat for a while, like you just start asking like people's opinions on like juice or whether you know their top two songs they'll dance to at weddings. It gets like you start <laughs> really, really running out of conversation at that point. You realize you probably should stop. Um, for the two PvP matches, it seems Hove played on Destiny 2 on PS4. I forgot that I played with him, so thanks again uh, for that. Also, bailing on me after one overmatch, Overwatch placement match. That oh, I played really Overwatch, appreciated. too. That was appreciated as well, so now I have one of ten done. <laughs> thanks. Uh, so, yeah, great week otherwise, and Hove being a disappointment. Got to play with you a little bit, Lego, for part of that faction. Uh, faction where I think we got pretty deep into some family stuff on that one, so that was pretty cool to learn that about you. But, again... <laughs> I think the, for the faction runs, you really you really learn a lot about people. Do some soul searching. <laughs> not much else to report. I don't have the PC, so I'm not going to be uh, really cool on on that conversation. So I'm but you're thinking just... about it. I am thinking about it, but I also have to you really should do it. Really drag out this other part here, so I have something to say. So, but yeah, good week. Nice. Well, I I do want to talk about the faction rally a little bit later because there's some new weapons that came out that I'm kind of into. I'm curious if y'all are into any of them. But before we do any of that, I want to get triples take on some of you know d2 because when we last talked i think the betas had been out but we hadn't really talked about much else and so just like before we get into any of the critiques of anything or even just talk about this pc console thing that's been really interesting conversation um how how have you felt about d2 as a whole just from the get-go when you first played it you know how how do you feel like you like the story campaign and all, all the, the gameplay compared to D1, you know, pulling over. How, how did you feel about initially D2? So, and after, like, you know, playing the full game, um, I would say that, you know, a few things stood out. Um, in general, I feel like the game has taken, like, a step backwards compared to the end of Destiny 1, right? And I think that's mm -hmm. fair to compare this game to you know where destiny one finished because you know it's not destiny one vanilla it's not fair to compare that because that was the beginning of destiny that was you know their first attempt they hadn't learned anything they hadn't yeah. you know gone through you know all these ups and downs and so it feels like they didn't take all that that they had you know they had learned to you know, respond to the community and kind of evolve the game and really learn what, you know, people wanted out of Destiny. And then so I, I you know, initially I'm like, okay, it's great. It's a brand new it's a game. It's a full sequel. You know, it doesn't have anything really to do with Destiny 1. It's a reset. Mm -hmm. And then that allows them to make big changes and take the game forward. But then it's like all the, all, a lot of really good stuff from Destiny 1 is missing. And that's what's really frustrating you know, to PvE yeah. players and PvP players alike is because um, there's just a lot of stuff that you grow accustomed to and then it's not there. And, uh, you know, yes, like I think the story is better compared to Destiny 1. I think a lot of like the core systems are better for bringing in new players, but it's just, it ends up being very shallow and there's people like me it doesn't even doesn't even matter how it doesn't have to be the people that play 10 hours a day it can be the people who put in you know like a long weekend in or whatever there's people that you, everyone's hitting that wall pretty quickly yeah like you know we love this game we want this to be our game like like other people have for you know what overwatch world of warcraft you know whatever mm -hmm. and it just it, there's just not enough there to keep you playing it's not even about content because there is a good amount of content in the game like strikes, there's just not, they're not giving you reasons to do them and reasons to be, you know, rewarded. So, um, I, I know they've acknowledged a lot of this, you know, recently, you know, things that they're going to be working on over time. But, um, you know, the question is, when is all that stuff going to end up getting implemented and, and how is yeah. it going to turn out? You know, the, the DLC is going to come out here uh, pretty soon, but, you know, that's all been, you know, planned and done for a while now like i don't think they're really being able to respond to a lot of the the feedback here at launch and it might be another case of like the dark below where you know just it, it, people were like hey you didn't you know answer any of the you know the requests that we had and the feedback that we gave and and they did kind of 
hit that with House of Wolves because get that you know that came later. So I think it might be similar to that where it's going to be that spring expansion where you really see you know Bungie start to you know change the direction of where the game's going in response to the community. Yeah. But you know that being said, I think that like a lot of the strikes are really good. The you know the planets and the art and the design, the music, everything, the presentation of this game is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty well optimized for PC. Um, we're Mac, you know, are, right? That's actually really impressive. Um, and uh, you know, I think there's like a handful of like guns that are awesome, like Tractor Cannon, Acreus, oh, uh, yeah. Ward Cliff. Uh, I think Cold Hard, Sweet Business. There's there's a, there's, a, there's some good guns in this game. I wish there were more like that, and I wish that they had like focused on making more new stuff because it feels like they're bringing lots of Destiny One mm-hmm. exotics back into the fold. And while I'm like all for that, it feels like it's a little too much too soon. I thought that maybe it would be something that they do later, maybe like in year year two of Destiny Two, they could yeah. Yeah. kind of bring some of that stuff back. But it's just like in the new trailer, it's like. Oh, there's Jade Rabbit and Telesto <laughs> and stuff. It's like, no, give me. I want new Jade Rabbits, new Telesto, new Last Words, and and I want that that stuff to fall in love with. That's totally unique. Yeah. Um, so I think, and I think that's like some of the uh, the hate toward Mida is just because it's a gun we've already had for three years, yeah. and it's like, you know, it's a boring gun. Give us <laughs> give us things that you know get get a hype. You know, we want we want that stuff. So exactly what I was um, saying. Yeah. I'm just tired of getting yeah. killed by D1 gun. You know, man. Well, I think one of the you know, like you were saying, they're they've acknowledged a lot of the things they're going to work on them, but you know, we don't know when they're going to come. I think one of the most telling things in that list was the only one we got any sort of time frame for was private matches, and that was still planning for early 2018, which is three months. You know, so yeah. you have to assume that's going to be the soonest one. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, maybe yeah. we'll get this one out. We don't know about the rest, which means to me they're all going to be well after that, which I think is expected, but you do have a lot of people that are already like, oh, they better fix all this with this new DLC. No, nah, man, mm-hmm. it's it's not going to happen. Like you said, that's, that's all been worked on for months now. So. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, people, you know, with destiny one, we're kind of the boat of, Hey, you know, we'll just get through destiny one and it's going to be okay because destiny two is going to solve all our problems. And maybe that was naive to, to think that, but it's still, you know, if, if you're used to games, just kind of starting off where, you know, the predecessor left off. Right. You're just like, OK, well, it'll be at least as good as that. And then they can build on that as a foundation. But, you know, here we are and just the replayability isn't there. And, you know, you're you're like the grind is very short. And, you know, as funny as it is, like, I, you know, here I am grinding for the same things on PC, just you know, collecting all like <laughs> the and stuff. And it's just, I'm blowing through it. Just yeah. It's so so short. So. You know, I, I I feel like there's a lot that they can do that doesn't have to be like some revolutionary system or feature that they could just, you know, the data and I talk about this. It's like you know, if they just had there's just a number that mm-hmm. was called number in the menu. And every time you played, that number went up <laughs> like that's something to play for. Mm-hmm. And like, <laughs> like prestige experience based leveling, you know, stuff that we've seen in other games. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. you grind the hell out of that. I remember. You know, I know you know COD has you know that for a long time now, but uh, I played Uncharted 2's multiplayer. Uh, that was actually like what I got into like creating content with back in the yes. day. And that and that game had a really awesome multiplayer, but it, it it had a leveling system which you know it was like you know it wasn't super deep, but um, like a little bit after launch they like they made it so you went you go from a level sixty to level eighty, but like it took you so i never hit level 80 that's the only game i play i played it all day like i literally 10 hours a day that was my game i never hit level 80 because it was such a grind but i love that i love that i was always making progress there were still things i never unlocked in that game and i was okay with that because it it was part of the experience so uh i think def you know we're missing some of that for sure that that game that you brought up, Uncharted, that was one of the references I brought up a few episodes ago was just like having, we were talking about the in-game and having something to grind for and Uncharted 4 has the system 
that I'm pretty sure COD has something similar, but basically like you have different mods to put on your guns and like it takes so long to get that many kills with that gun that you want to use it all the time. And like I never reached even like I think I reached a full set of mods, but never any of like the hero sets and stuff because it takes yeah. so long to get to those but i was okay with that like even though i didn't go to that game very much when i did i felt like i was making progress right. there's always like, things that you could do and if you wanted to mm -hmm. you know pursue that type of you know checklist of like unlocking everything like that was totally an option to you um and you know i i feel that there, there's a comment that luke smith made before the game came out about you know the question that like i'm trying to paraphrase uh, a question that we need to answer is like, how can, you know, my 10th better devils be yes. better than the first one or something? You know, it's mm -hmm. like, how can that be interesting? And that's a question we need to answer. It's like, yes, you need to answer that because right now there is like, once you start getting duplicates in this game, it's just, yep. like, yeah. it's the exact same gun, just dismantle, dismantle, dismantle. You know, it, even if it was just like, you know, you get 10 better devils and then you unlock a new skin. Yes, or, exactly. You know, I get, 500 kills in pvp i get a, i get a new skin or something you know shader i think there's a lot or like an emblem that shows your kills with that gun you know mm. I think there's there's so much like really simple things i mean i'm not i'm not a dev maybe that's really hard to do for them i don't know but it, mm -hmm. it feels like there's just very easy things in terms of just reasons to use the guns we still have the subclasses we have access to and all these things um so hopefully that's you know it's on their radar and they're they're looking at that. Do you think that given their response time, like we were talking about how you know they've given a response that like hey we recognize these things are a problem. Do you think that that indicates at all that like basically a faster fix than indie one? I know we just talked about how you know it may be till just after the winter that we even get those fixes, but in D one you know we didn't we didn't really have a lot of these things acknowledged from the get-go the problems we did have mm -hmm. and now we're kind of getting those responses faster i feel like do you feel like it's gonna that is a good indication basically of things to come or are you still a little weary i i truthfully i have no idea what's going to happen i really think it's in bungie's best interest to if they're not able to make changes quickly have a really strong dialogue with the community and let mm -hmm. them know like hey you know i know you guys want this out now but it's not ready and this is why and I, I, it's a double-edged sword i know they they seem hesitant to communicate a lot because i think in their minds that you know if they say something and then it you know something changes or yeah. it doesn't end up being exactly that way, then they're going to get crucified but i still feel saying nothing or you know you know when you lean toward less communication and what happens at least with destiny um but i i would say just in general with this type of thing is it like just people it becomes like an echo chamber and mm. uh you, you just there's just people you know yelling off into the void not feeling like they're being heard and yeah you can say oh we're listening but if you're not giving us some tangible tangible response to what we're saying then it just feels like you don't care even if you mm. do and i you know i you know, I have huge, huge respect for all the men and women at Bungie. I know that they they want to make a great game and they want people to love it. And you know, we're all we all have the same goal. You yeah. know, it's not like we're yeah. at war here, but it's just like I feel like that communication is still um, hasn't you know hit that really good stride yet. Um, I I think that the game is in a place where it really needs, you know, like it needs a win, right? Yeah. And uh, I don't know if like. A couple strikes pvp maps a two-hour campaign and you know i don't know if that stuff like which i expect you know to be run-of-the-mill expansion stuff for you know the curse of osiris i don't know if that's going to be enough and there needs to be something big whether it's uh, quality of life changes or it's actual like some crazy cool content um yeah i certainly got my fingers crossed but and i just i don't know you know it's <laughs> you know, i'm really I'm really hoping that, that that big change comes from the live team more than the expansion team because that's what it that's where it feels like it's gonna come from given the responses like that we've gotten so far. I don't I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. Well, as far as the communication, like I agree a hundred percent that whether it's it's good or it's bad, they need to to let us know. But on the flip side of that, like I feel for them to a point because I feel like they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't from from some sides because like I said, I agree with you 100%, but if they come out and say, uh, hey, we can't do this, this is going to take a while, 
you're still, it's the internet, you know, you're still going to people go, oh God, Bungo's so lazy. They won't work on it. They're stupid. They're the worst. <laughs> like, and I'm not saying they shouldn't, they, or that, that Bungie shouldn't say like, hey, this is going to take a while. It's just like, you know, as far as the internet goes, like I just, I, I'm speechless well, I, about I think, it. Like, I think like a, a problem that I see as well is like, people people tend to lump everyone in together so yeah. they'll take people that are actually being toxic and they'll lump them in with people that are giving constructive criticism Absolutely. and just say oh you know they'll it's, it's a kind of like confirmation bias you know you'll have 10 people try to be like you know respectful and you know give good ideas and and, and feedback and then they'll have one person that just you know is an asshole and then just be like you know this, this community is toxic and they're just, you know, they're entitled and blah, blah, blah. And I think it, it's, it's important to recognize that there is a very vocal minority just, you know, in humanity that is like that. That's that's always right. the case when you're dealing with, with people and you can't yeah. let that, you know, get in the way of, uh, you know, I think what it, you know, a good example is uh, Bungie's decision not to put, you know, any kind of like all chat in the game, you know, via voice or text chat or all this stuff. And it, you know, it's a fundamentally, it's a social game and, what I feel and a lot of people is that they're kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater saying, oh, well, you know, people are going to be toxic, you know, so we need to take these tools away when you 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 fail to recognize that there's a vast majority that are not going to be toxic and they're going to use this, you know, to better the experience of the game and to actually create that friend gaming, you know, goal that they have, which we all have, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, playing Destiny by yourself is not a particularly great experience particularly and d2 <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you're faction farming it's terrible by yourself <laughs> right and, and, and let's face it you know just going in and you know seeing all these guardians and you can't really interact with them or you know you know the guided games is a great idea it's just not fully realized yet it's just you know the average person is not going to be going on reddit or discord or twitch or you know looking for lfg stuff you know they they expect a game like this to have that you know you know those tools in the game for them to you know make friends easily and i just don't think that it's there yet because you know th there's already reporting tools in the game you know and and that's what you do you know if if you run into someone toxic you report them and and you, you get it deal you know dealt with or you mute them or whatever like you still yeah you know it's not like you're out there and you have no control over it now I, I can tell you that from playing lots of games and somewhere i've been toxic in so you know it's <laughs> uh i i think you know that it speaks to bungie has great intentions but i think it, like this is a case where i i do think it is hurting uh kind of the experience yeah, I'm curious if, uh, you know, they, they're aware of like a lot of those specific topics that you just covered, because they talked about a lot of those in the TWAB uh, mm -hmm. for like the social guided game section that they had there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, it was just interesting. They But it was the same as the other issues they've addressed. It's kind of like, hey, we know these are a problem, but they didn't give exact fixes for a lot of them. It was just like, you know, we're trying to figure out a way we could make it basically not toxic and allow people to talk to each other. And uh, yeah, it's and just that's that great. That, and that and that's exactly what we, we want and what we hear. And I think that's a great response. So I really hope that, you know, it happens soon because, yeah. again, I, I just feel like Destiny 2 was a game that needed to hit the ground running. And it still feels like we're just clawing our way back to yeah, whatever yeah. the status quo was. And hey, you know, there's nothing that we can do about this now, and it's fine. We just got to uh, do our best and try to be patient. But at the same time, I, I think a lot of people's patience has run out because, again, they were like, get through Destiny 1, and Destiny 2 will be our holy grail, will be our savior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's probably yep. a little unrealistic. And uh, Destiny 2, it's a big game. It's a complex game. It's mm -hmm. on, you know, three different platforms now. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard because... You want to just say, oh, well, just do this, just make it work. And that's where, again, like I think the communication stuff comes in because, yeah, you know, I'm not a dev. I don't know what goes into adding certain features and things. And I know that sometimes it's just not possible or they, it's just it, it's so much in terms of, you know, time and resources and money. Um, but again, if they can come out and say, hey, we want to do this, too. And this is why we can't right now, or we're going to do this again. And I think that's the type of conversations that are really going to, um, 
like mend, you know, some of the the hurt right now between uh, the players and the devs. So um, yeah, I hope they they continue along this line. And when the Cosmo came out and said, uh, you know, we're listening, and he had that paragraph. Uh, I don't know, it was about a month ago now. I think that was great. I was like, this is good. This is exactly what we need. And then uh, more recently, they they listed out all the you know the things they're looking at with the game directly responding to the community. That's awesome. And then more this week. So if they can just keep this up and then deliver, I think um, you know we'll be in the best possible place. Yeah, Triple. I like your take on the fact that you know you felt Destiny Two had to be a step up from the end of Destiny One. I think you know we've talked about on the pod over the summer, speculating that it had to hit it out of the park. Everybody was like, "We'll forgive some of the things in Destiny One as long as Destiny Two fixes these things." And you know, when you think about where Destiny is in their life cycle, and you know, I think just when you're talking about running out of patience, you know, I think they're spending some of their goodwill. At what point and how quickly do you think they need to get ahead of some of the things we're asking for before that you just, just truly start to lose some of the dedicated fan base to other games that are trying to compete in this space? At what point can it not just be, we'll react? At what point does it have mm-hmm. to be, we're ahead of things, beyond things just like the story? Yeah, I mean, I think that's that is happening and everyone's going to be different, right? Everyone, I know there's people that already skipped D2 because they felt, you know, that yeah. they had a bad experience with D1. And, uh, you know, everyone's entitled to, you know, do what they want and, and give their money to the games that they think deserve it. Um, I, in a lot of ways, Destiny 2 is a success. Of course, it's a, it's a commercial success. And uh, I think that reviewers were a lot more um, happy with the game. And uh, I think that's all valid. I think that it's a great game for people that never played Destiny 1. Yeah. And I don't think it's a great sequel to Destiny 1. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that maybe shows a shift in, in who Destiny 2 is meant for. And a lot of the, the design decisions were seem to be made for new players and people that are not going to play more than, you know, maybe a, an hour or two a day or maybe play like one or two days a week. And... You know, I would say that, you know, why does it have to be either for the casual or for the hardcore? I certainly think it can be a game that's going to include both. You know, I, I, as I've said many times, I want as many new players to come play the game. I want want the game to be inviting and accessible, but I don't want it to, like, come at the expense of, you know, having this low ceiling for anyone that wants to really put in time to the game and really love it. So... You know, I, I think that a lot of people are, they have their, they're holding their breath for uh, Curse of Osiris. And I, you know, again, we don't know anything about it really. So yeah. I don't know, you know, it's a bit premature to judge. I, I really hope it's good um, because if it is good, that's going to, again, restore some faith in people. And then hopefully that, that'll tide them over till like spring when we get private matches and hopefully some of these, you know, uh, bigger core changes and then, you know, the spring expansion. Yeah. Nice. Well, well we do know Cyrus in... thinks he's a giant chicken, right? <laughs> Call the <family> <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> he's, you know, he's seen some shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, swapping the conversation here for a second, I just want to see what subclass, cause you know, everybody, everybody kind of knew your play style in D1 and D2. What do you feel like has been your go-to like subclass and weapons that you've been playing with? And mm-hmm. not only that, but like, do you see a difference in what you like playing in the console version versus what you've played so far in the PC version? Yeah, um, you know, I think that I I gravitate toward Hunter just because that's you know what I I mm-hmm. played the most in D one, and I really I like the movement system, but. Uh, yeah, that being said, I think I put more time in, into playing Voidwalker in D2 because I think uh, Voidwalker is such a great example of how to like take something that we we knew and just really reinvent it and make it interesting yeah. and really unique amongst the other uh, subclasses. So you know the whole the whole counterplay revolving around um, you know the self healing is really cool and uh, I just have so much fun with that. Plus Blink is great. Yeah. And it, there's just it, that just opens up a whole new level of things you can do in terms of being aggressive and uh, defensive. So that that's been a lot of fun. Nice. Um, but I, I played I played a lot of uh, of Gunslinger too. So I usually go back and forth between Gunslinger and Voidwalker. 
Uh, you know, I think a lot of the other classes are pretty good too. Um, Striker's really strong. Um, Sentinel's great. And, uh, and Stormcaller's also really good. I think that, you know, ironically, Hunter's a little bit worse on PC because, mm. uh, you know, you don't have to deal with aim assist with uh, Night Stalker and visibility. Yeah. So that's, it's just funny. I remember like the first day I was playing PvP, a guy goes in base, I just shoot him. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I was like, I couldn't do that. And uh, that. right, I, I mean, I felt bad. I was like my fellow hunter. You know, <laughs> he, he thought he was safe, but um, I was trying to do that in Grizzle. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna you know be Night Stalker so I can go invisible. And then someone actually yeah. told me it was during Trials of Osiris. Like, just so you know, if they're playing mouse and keyboard, it doesn't really do anything. I'm like, what? But you lose. Oh. <laughs> oh that the whole point's out the window now <laughs> right it's everything changes and uh i think that like the the hunter dodge just feels it just feels worse yeah than it's ever been it just feels pretty so slow. slow to me yeah you know? there's no iframes the animation's pretty slow and you know it just doesn't help your team and all this stuff like uh rumor is that the the graviton forfeit mm. exotic from d1 and is actually going to just give you a second dodge which i think is yeah. interesting and that, that yeah. might you know that'll probably be like the only exotic that'll be like so far above every other exotic that you know to be able to chain your dodges together might be cool but uh you know that coupled with the fact that you you know your you, your recovery is just so oh gosh your yeah. max recovery and and then you know like iron banner armor set comes out and i got that and i can't use it because i had a max of like two or three recovery because you mm -hmm. don't have any choice for this stuff it's just like oh this cool. armor's so cool and i can't use it the good news so, is that's all offset by the fact that the arc strider super is op right oh it's so good it's never <laughs> been better it's never been better i think i think i've yet to die to a single arc strider on, on pc at least. it is yeah it's like, same it's just, actually i i it's at the point where you're better off not using your super because it's like it's like a handicap because at least you know if you're not in your super you know you have a gun <laughs> and you shoot them like you pop your soup and you're just like kill me a free kill right here Bring i swear on. the dodge is slower when you're in super too you like slowly oh, I, I, flip I, to the it side it feels like you you move slower your dodge is not even a dodge it's just like a hey make my hitbox bigger <laughs> you faster you're just doing car wheels right? making it wider <laughs> right and then and then you know you go look at sentinel and sentinel's like fast and agile you, you can get your health back and you yeah. throw in your shield and you're just dodging it's just like why would you ever pick Arc Strider when you have something like that already in the game? It's yeah, we're like, making fun of Arc Strider, but I might be the worst golden gun user on mouse and keyboard because now you actually <laughs> have to point oh, and yeah. hit targets. <laughs> and oh my God, chat has never ripped me apart more than that now on mouse and keyboard because I've whiffed multiple, <laughs> all three shots on a single person. Gold That's saying a lot gun. because your chat is pretty savage. Dude, they are they have destroyed me now. Just whiff, whiff, whiff. I'm just like... P.S. I've hit them and then they clipped it. Like, <laughs> well, okay. That brings up an interesting thought for me. I, I hadn't heard the the rumor that the uh, Graviton forfeit might give you a second dodge. Um, with them going so far towards balance and, and taking away some of the extra like double grenades and stuff, like how, how much do you guys think mm -hmm. that opens the door for some stupid good like exotics to give you double pulse grenades on you know storm caller with an extra man right yourself do you know what I, well i mean they're doing it for one yeah no i think Never i with think that, that hopefully god they're they're probably going that direction and honestly i i'm okay with that i think that a lot of the magic of the game is gone now because you know so, so many things just feel so watered down mm -hmm. and it kind of as the game gets slower there's less chances for you as an individual player to um feel empowered right it's just like oh yeah. i gotta have my team here oh you know there was nothing i could do as a 1v2 and i want i want those moments where you can make reversals and make some awesome plays and i think exotics are a part of that Ex the whole reason that you were limited to one exotic was because exotics were so good in general with d1 and in d2 a lot of the exotics are like are you kind of mechaneer trick sleeves <laughs> i don't even know what that is are you, yeah i don't have that yeah. they are exotic Hunter gauntlets that Side increase arm. your ready speed with uh, sidearms. Yes. And uh, it's, it, I think it's just like quick draw or whatever. 
not only do they look so they look just like the most boring piece of green gear I've ever seen, <laughs> but that perk, I just I thought it I thought it was a joke. I was like, there's, there's no way this is real. Um so hopefully that yeah, they're gonna go and make some of this stuff really, you know, spectacular. And same with weapons, because you know, I really I strongly feel that exotics should be at least as good as legendaries and have the chance to really, you know, shine above. And I know that I feel like they, they want exotics to be more of just something that everyone gets and they're just really niche and kind of does something one thing unique. But I, I think that they at a base level need to be strong weapons. And uh, I know it was, it was a case with a lot of D1 exotics, but, um, you know, there's not, you know, I, you know, we have Mida, but the other, you know, uh, energy and kinetic exotics are just kind of nothing that gets me fired up, you know, nothing yeah, like, oh, right. this is Hawkmoon, like, oh, this is you know, No Land Beyond or, you know, something just like, okay, this is great. And then the ones like they bring back, like Hard Light is mm. so just like... Why did you bring this back if you're not going to make it like really good? And I know you can switch the element, but you can't even do that like in the the like nightfall. Like, yeah. Watch your gear. You can't even switch between the elements. So um, yeah, we'll see what well, happens. You talk about like the aesthetics and like feeling powerful and all that stuff. And I've probably watched your reckoning montage at least 20 times. I think two <laughs> people got into the game, me showing them. It was just one of those things. It was like, I'm playing Destiny right now. Look how cool it is to see this game. Like that's, I don't feel like that's, that's there anymore. I mean, sure. Some people probably have montages by now, mm -hmm. but like, I mean, I take me another year to put one together for like three minutes. So, I mean, how much yeah. do you miss like that element of the game and like just being fun and powerful and getting to see like those plays you're talking about? I just want to say no, quickly, I... I got Rachel Taylor's album because of your montage. <laughs> 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 that song is fantastic. I might have uh, made you some sales on your album. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that's, you know, it's maybe like a silly benchmark to like, you know, how cool is a montage for your game? But it is true. Like, if you can't yeah. do really cool stuff, then I think that just there's a base level of enjoyment that you're going to miss out on. And yeah, you can't really do the same. I, I think now, in retrospect, I feel that the weapon system being moved to two primary, one power hurts the experience mm. because it definitely has hurt pve because you definitely do not feel as powerful in pve for that mm. reason it's, it's not just at a base level it's not as fun and then you have you know moments like in the raid where you're just farming heavy because it's the only way for you to get by certain areas like yeah. you know, bathers if you don't have heavy you're dead and, yeah you know, when we were doing our raids and you just reach points you're like all right it's time to farm heavy for a while and then then we can try another you know a go at it so in pvp what it's done is yeah i know i know it's it's like it's more balanced and it's not like there's like less bullshit one hit kills and stuff and i'm not saying that like destiny one was like a perfect game by any means but i feel like that core element you know, as as a player at any individual time you you could make a play you know, you, yeah. you know at least like up until they started messing with the special ammo economy mm -hmm. you know i had a shoddy i had a sniper i could shut down a super i could wipe a team if i was good enough if you know the stars aligned or whatever and those were what made like trials really hype is that because mm -hmm. anything yeah. could happen at any time anything yeah. you know could be huge comebacks or just like whoa like i can't believe what just happened and that's I think that's a lot of that yep. that spectator magic and yeah. you know as a yeah. player just you know that's not there and i'll go into a match and if i'm like up against a full stack or something if like the teams are a little lopsided there's almost no chance for us to make a victory just because it becomes a numbers game it's like yeah. oh we'll just run around a group and there's nothing you can do um and this not as as fun by any means it's yeah, really D1, you had that chance that like all-star like if you felt good about like uh mm -hmm. how your skill was and everything like 3v1 or something like here we go you know yeah. i'm feeling good yeah. my snipes on today bring it on and d2 you got you got a 3v1 now and then you're or a 4v1 now and it's just like let's yeah. see what i can do <laughs> you know it's yeah, like it's, just, it's not it's not really happening you much so, you have to be so lucky or grab like a power weapon such as like yeah. maybe like a rocket or something to yeah. pull something crazy off mm -hmm. even Stay with a shotgun you slide around the corner you can get shut down what? by two other people 
Yeah, see, see, Hove running for power ammo is now a viable strategy. No, 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 no. <laughs> He's talking about to clutch it's, something. I know. Notice when Triple said you run it's, around it's the pack. Harsh. You were the yeah. one yeah. who just runs yeah. off, and you get power, and then we all get collapsed <laughs> on. And you go, don't worry, guys, I have a fusion. I'll clutch it. He's, he's on this sick that play. One he's but, the one um, who sacrifices his team to I'm make that the sick game play. Fun. Right? For you. Yeah. Um, but no, that was something that we, we touched on and, and was kind of a concern. I think it was the episode we had the week of the console beta, when we hmm. first got to see PvP, and we were like, you know, regardless of gameplay, you know, we'll see how that works out, but uh, how fun it is. But the thing, like we were saying, Destiny 1 was so watchable and so exciting and, and montages were so readily made because you crazy stuff could happen. You could do all these powerful things and it was exciting to watch. You know, you look at the numbers on Twitch, it always did pretty well, even when there was no mm -hmm. content. And it wasn't because people yeah. wanted to watch the same strike. It's because it was exciting. And right when, you know, we got into the uh, Kinetic and, and, you know, two primaries for the most part, we were like, you know, are they moving... Away, towards balance and away from the excitement like how's that going to affect people who want to watch yeah. the game and i think you're starting to see that now i mean you know we've had droughts in d1 and people still watched on twitch but from what i've seen even the numbers on twitch in the directory like the total numbers are down yeah well and it's like the vast majority of content creators have moved on to other games and so it's not even about you know like my numbers are pretty good when i stream it's, it's fine but it's like there's just not a burning desire to watch the game. Right. And I know that because I don't really want to watch the game yeah. either. So same. Um, I think the game can definitely be like salvaged. That sounds so mean, but like, yeah. I think that they could make some, some changes and it's not like the game is doomed because of right. like, the weapon system. Although I think if we go to destiny three, I would like them to go back to a primary special heavy, um, model because I think that that is going to be more fun for everyone and not mm -hmm. to say that again it was perfect in D1 but between vanilla and you know roughly Taken King that was that was the high point in terms of like the base balance for how all that worked because primaries were strong your special weapons were strong heavy was strong so it was all kind of balanced what what started to really hurt the game was when primaries became weak and then special weapons and abilities remain strong because of course that's all people are going to use and um i wish they had just gone and buffed primaries a whole lot more because i think that would have changed the game back uh to that so i'm curious uh just and before i even pose the question it's it's interesting the the balance of between because we talked about like with streamers and us who play the game a whole lot and then the regular person who comes in like where that balances of uh making the game accessible but also making it continually fun and fun to watch because i, I i'm curious what your what your solutions to make it like salvageable and i know when salvageable you say that it's not like this isn't a good game in a certain way it's just making it watchable like and have that excitement you know for yeah, you want to you want to raise that that skill ceiling so people can pull off amazing mm -hmm. plays more regularly mm -hmm. and because that's what gets people you know the audience fired up you know why do people watch overwatch and league of legends and counter-strike and, and PUBG and all these games because like there are really good players and they can show how really dang good they yes. are because the game allows them if you if you make it so everyone's on the same level then you know there's no satisfaction there yeah like, like even the you as the the streamer like showcasing what you can do he's like you're making a sick play i'm like i want to do that again you know you're right. just going that, in over and over again that's instead what of, keeps you yeah you know instead of just being there alongside like, of yeah. everyone else you're just like okay i got a lucky double kill you know that that's your highlight of that game is it maybe and, i can stop so because that, you know because now like <clears throat> like all the plays you make are usually because you had power ammo or super or whatever and you're not yeah. really outplaying people it's just like mm -hmm. you know i'm not getting in shoddy fights with people or sniper fights it's just oh i had this and you didn't and then you know i just hit my shot it's like huh. i want to feel like i i earned you know a play and i really was was doing something and again that's going back to you know when d1 was at its you know pvp peak in my opinion that's what happened everyone had you know shoddy or sniper ammo everyone had you know a good primary and that was great because you were kind of on that even playing field 
and you were you were fighting it out in this you know dance of weapons and when to use which where so i think that's uh that's largely gone and uh you know i think it, you don't know you know what you have until you don't have it <laughs> and uh you know I, I i fully support you know bungie for trying things and and taking risks and maybe mm -hmm. this will be one of those things where they look back and say all right you know I don't think that worked for our game as well, especially when big of a risk. Trying, <laughs> yeah, well, especially when they're they're trying to keep some kind of parity between the PVE side and PVP side, and um, yeah, I, the communities go back and forth like, you know, oh, you're just doing this for PVP, and oh, this is hurting our, you know, the PVE side, and those are oftentimes are very valid, uh, you know, complaints. So, you know, whether Bungie decides to separate that more going forward or, or what, I, I do think this change was probably done in the interest of balancing like crucible um but is you know, maybe not been uh maybe not turned out the way that they wanted yeah well, now that we're on this enough oh. of a risk though so i mean you mentioned it a little bit earlier about that but i mean i feel like you they didn't go all the way with it and i saw your tweet about like the rank so you water everything down you make it so it's an even playing field because that's what some people wanted and then, you know, like you mentioned with that voice chat in the tower, well, we don't want the 10% of people who are going to be toxic. I mean, if you do all those things, like with the PVP, sh you know, why not offer that that ranked playlist because you've made everything equal playing field? Yeah. I mean, I just and don't feel like that's, that's enough risk. That's something that uh, I've talked at length about. And they, they come out in stage during the reveal and they're like, Crucible's back. 4v4, brand new mode, countdown, attack and defend, you know, just hitting these bullet points. It's like, okay, awesome. You know, they're really, you know, mm -hmm. they're taking Crucible seriously and this is going to be the experience that people like me wanted. And then it's like, and there's no private matches and there's no ranked and we have two playlists. Mm. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just so confused. Like, why are you going halfway? Like, commit to something. Like, just make it a casual game and make it fun and give us lots of things to do or make it, like, really serious and competitive. Like, I, I just don't know why, you know, certain dis decisions have been made because they seem to conflict with one another. Um, See, that was my, what was my question was going to be is, like, uh, I was mainly a Crucible guy in D1. And now coming to D2 me and a lot of my friends that i play with like including like hovey and like we don't play a lot of crucible we kind of think it's it's gotten dull even though like when it first started off we're like 4v4 yeah you know like we kind of like this it's almost reminiscent to halo you know we're okay with the team fires and all that but like you said only two playlists and we get randomized you know game modes that could be the same stuff over and over again like what is what do you there's feel also overall lack, like there's a lack of a variety uh, in terms of you know there's no there's no rumble there's no yeah that's what we're saying like, uh, what do you like, think I, about all that like what's your main like standpoint on just the whole direction that they they took since we're kind of talking about it right now yeah my, my initial take is like <sighs> hey you know do one thing great as opposed to a bunch of things kind of mediocre but at the same time it's like I like 4v4. I don't think the entire game should just be 4v4 because mm -hmm. that ignores yeah. it ignores the like the solo players a lot, especially with the matchmaking, putting solo queues up against four stacks all the time, as I found out when I tried <laughs> solo queue. Um and and then there's just there's not really a playlist where you can go and chill and relax. I'm not really talking about skill-based matchmaking or anything. I'm just literally just talking about how the game is played. And I think that if they had some kind of combined arms type mode like 10 v 10 on a few giant maps mm -hmm. that would be something that would be fun you know make it like halo 5 warzone throw some pve enemies in there and some basic objectives i, don't I know. feel like they missed out on that opportunity when uh right out the box when they you know, like first released the game when the player pool mm -hmm. was at its maximum i feel like then they should have had multiple game modes multiple like just more things to mess around with instead right. of or now or they could have you know because <sighs> they did have those rotating playlists in d1 they could have something like that but just do you know wacky game modes maybe they could make mm. gun game work maybe they could just have a yes. tractor cannon only gun game so or, much. or they could tractor have cannon you know, only yes can only <laughs> you know the snipers and shotguns they could just they could rotate every week and have just something that's you know meant to be fun um it's just something to mess around with like you know overwatch has uh, I think that that could be something that would maybe reinvigorate. You know, hey, give us mayhem. You know, at least give us mayhem. Yeah, mayhem. Oh, my gosh. 
I would play gun game all day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Mayhem was one that I like really wanted back, but then I was thinking about like how that would work with like rockets being in a power spot and someone who just like literally runs in with a rocket and kills themselves every single like round they die. Maybe just you spawn in with ammo, right? Hell, just give you infinite ammo for everything. There you go. That's that full so much fun. <laughs> Bottomless that, bag. And, and you know what the danger is? People are going to enjoy that more than any of the base regular yeah. modes. And, so, and then that kind of exposes, you know, the, some of the issues of the game. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I like. I, what, I would play that so much. I yeah. like what you said about like one of the only times you get plays for like a highlight is when you have power ammo, and it made me think about you know the times that are most satisfying for me playing D two right now is when I have power ammo and I go against somebody else who has power ammo and I outplay them because that's like right. I'm even playing ground, but it's fast and I outsmarted them, and it's like, Absolutely. dang, yes, that's the clip, you know, and that's that's right. like no, the you main just crouched play. in a corner until they didn't know you were there. <laughs> oh, <come laughs> Yeah, like, Lego, if this is your justification as to why you leave all of us to go get power ammo and then get your 1v4, I'm, I'm not. I'm now not. you're exposing me, not Bungie. Yeah. So. <laughs> He's got to get the boot clips, guys. He's got to get the boot clips. Uh, well, uh, I think that, you know, I'm I'm curious what we, we talked a little bit about things they could do with Crucible game modes and, and, you know, even rewards and stuff like that a little bit for replayability. I'm curious, you mentioned earlier, you know, what they could do to maybe make it a little bit more watchable. Um, Mm -hmm. And the reason I bring that up is because I, a lot of people that I've talked to who get into it from Triton, you said you showed someone, you know, triples highlight video and it's like, oh, that brought them into the game. But those people that come into the game after watching those, a lot of them instantly get supered or, you know, would sniped in D1. I just introduced Destiny year three to somebody and they came in and they were just like dying. Like as soon as they spawned in every single time. And then I hear those same kind of people loving D2. And it's that weird, like, Hmm. yes, maybe it's better for the average player, but then it's not as fun overall and they drop it pretty quickly afterwards. So I don't know, where is that balance for you? Do you feel like triple where like what would make this more watchable, but yet still decent for the normal player that comes in? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the danger is um, trying to make a game where, you know, it's just everyone can have fun in right because that's Mm. that's an impossible goal not everyone's going to enjoy every game and to try to make it so oh well if you know if we limit good players and that just means you know newer players and less go players are going to have more fun and such and i think that's a trap that some devs fall into the Mm. truth is again if you look at the most popular games the one thing they share in common is that they have really high skill ceilings and they have the ability yeah. for people to really do incredible stuff. And that doesn't mean that someone can't pick up the game and you know it's easy to pick up, but difficult to master, which is a great uh, philosophy. And it's something that the devs actually specifically mentioned yeah. with D2. So I think that there, it would be better for them to adhere closer to that going forward because, you know, again, it's, it's something where, you know, if, if I can draw a comparison, a lot of the reasons that people are like, they're not happy with, you know, prestige mode raid or strikes and stuff is because there's nothing, you're not really getting cool stuff out of it. If you, you know, you go back to D1, we had strike exclusive gear, things that I grinded, you know, as a PVP player, grinded the hell out of to get some of that stuff to drop for me. Or, you know, all the hard mode in raids or Age of Triumph. You, you do have some really cool armor sets. You have some cool mm-hmm. guns. And that's, that's, if you, you can have something that's difficult to do, but if there's no payoff, then it loses all, yeah. all the reason to do it. And I have right. yet to, I have yet to complete a prestige raid just because it's just like, eh, well, yeah. it's like the same armor. Right it's there with you. Everyone has been it's telling me really... there's no point in doing it. So yeah. I haven't even attempted it. And then it kind of it kind of becomes the same thing with PvP. If if every you know if everyone is on that you know same level, if you're just limited from doing cool things and and you know becoming someone you know that is, well, I think in D one you could separate yourself, and there were a lot of different play styles yeah. that people people could have. You know, there were people that are really good at Titan skating. And that's what they became known for. That was a play style. There are people mm-hmm. that you know were really good on Blade Dancer or Shade Step or all this stuff. 
and that's just kind of missing because everything just kind of feels the same in D2. And there's not just there's not room for that player expression, mm-hmm. that individuality. Um, and uh, I think that's, you know, I would like to see that return. Absolutely. They yeah. overly balanced it is what you're yeah, of course. They you know, tried a, a too perfectly hard. balanced game is not fun. Yeah. Yeah, the first, like first to say that, and and you know if we were going to go back, say hey, you know let's let's take you know a good time in Destiny One's past, you know how would you make it better? And and I would always say like either Taken King or uh, House of Wolves, and I would say all right, let's make maybe like five changes, and then leave the rest of the game alone. It's not going to make everything perfectly balanced, but it'll it'll rein in some of the really egregious outliers of things like I don't know Thorn Two Tap. <laughs> or shot package or you know final round snipers you know get rid of some of the really bad stuff but you're keeping things powerful because that's you know that's really what sets destiny apart from other games is that you know you're you're wielding space magic you're, you're wielding all these awesome powerful mm-hmm. mystical weapons and it's it's not you just walking around in a military shooter um yeah. and i think destiny 2 has kind of kind of lost some of that well going back like lego when you were saying you know, about people just picking up the game and then they get yeah. super and they get killed. And, you know, now it's maybe a little bit better for something like that. I mean, isn't that kind of like the definition of skill gap? You know, like it, it had a skill gap. They were new. They were at the, the bottom, you know, the, the, at the bottom of that. And they were getting killed sure. by people who were somewhere up yeah. the ladder. And now, 100%. 100%. as you close I think, that skill I think it gap, comes down, that's how it comes you... comes down to like... Yeah. No, sorry. Sorry for interrupting. No, that, I mean, that was pretty um, much uh, the end. <laughs> that, 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 I, I, I was going to say something along those lines and uh, I, I forgot I mid, mid thought, but you know, again, looking at, you know, some of these other games, some of them are, do not have, you know, an easy learning curve, right? Some of them are pretty brutal. Like I think League of Legends is considered one of the hardest games to learn, you know, starting out or whatever, or like PUBG, you drop into a game of PUBG, you're not going to be <laughs> winning your first game, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be a rough time, I but don't it's that... Games. It's that you you learn the game, you watch the game, whether it's you know YouTubers or Twitch or you know you just see you see what's possible and then you aspire to be that and you aspire yes. to learn that and become better. You're like you're you're being brought up to the level of the game. The game isn't coming down to your level, and uh, I think there's you know an, an important distinction there. I like that a lot. Yeah. I mean, that was half the reason I started sniping in destiny because i would be like you know i get sniped by people like over and over again i'm like i want to be able to do that like how it's possible like someone just did it Mm -hmm. to me like and i got you know i I would say i was you know slightly above average player but that was much better than i was when i started and it's because Mm -hmm. you know i got dominated early like truth be told in all honesty i uh Right when I really kind of started getting into PvP and started playing with people, because you know I had taken a break in early Vanilla Destiny because I it was just me and one in real life friend who quit playing, and as I was coming back, it was the it was like Vanilla Trials, you know, House of Wolves, and I ran into it was on um, Pantheon. I was playing with some random people, and I ran into you, Triple, and Resolve. <laughs> And I was like, oh, like it was right when I was just getting in. So I was like, oh, you know, you know, like, I know this guy. He's a streamer. And it was like I peaked and I was dead. And then like we just got <laughs> demolished. And in all seriousness, it was like, man, like I want to be able to like do that. Like that guy just fucking ruined my life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and and I, you know, I never got to that point, obviously, but it was something to go for. Right, and I think that's one of the appeals and, and reasons that ranked modes are so successful. It's like imagine yeah. Overwatch without ranked. That game would be dead. Because if you don't have a reason to play, then you know you end up with like Destiny Two Crucible right now. It's just like I like the game. Like for all my issues with the game, I still enjoy playing it. Mm-hmm. And if there was if there was a reason to keep me playing, I would. But right now, it's just like I already had that with D One for three years. It was just you know basically quick play and then trials, and that was yeah. it. And you know it's okay because it's like all right, it's the first game, Destiny Two. I, I they, they can't really do that anymore. Like uh, I I can't play three more years of, of quick play and maybe some trials here. Um, I I want uh, you know I want a game where I can get absolutely destroyed and then say hey, uh, how do I get better? You know, how do I learn from this? Right now it doesn't happen. It's just like oh, you know I got team shot or yeah you outplayed. turn the corner instead of being domed or outplayed. It's just a, it's just a checkpoint like a, a check uh, 
checkmate, right? It's it's that's not fun. Yeah, mm. I, I want a game where there's like the possibility that's like okay, that I can really you know learn here, and it's just not really the case. It's yeah. like uh, we talked about it multiple times for like just something to suck us back in because like uh, one of my main complaints is Crucible's boring for me because I can't choose the game modes. Like you only get two playlists and a couple game modes each, but I could tolerate that more. I'll jump back into it more if maybe there's something to work towards within that game, like that playlist, like maybe like cool looking emblems, effects over your head, which there's, I think there's only one in the game right now. What, what are those yeah, called? Just um, two. There's one for two, you know, yeah. or prestige, prestige rate. That mm -hmm. one. Yeah. yeah. There's something more <laughs> that line, something Three. that yeah. can like show off to people, you know, and like, yo, mm -hmm. look at this. I worked hard for it. I'm going to jump back into that crucible game type. I'm going to sprinkle some salt on you with my <laughs> you know, swag. But it's just like, but I go, I go back in there instead of sprinkling salt on someone, I turn the corner and get slaughtered by team shots. And then I, you know, it's, I don't know. It's, it's almost like, and I have no idea if this was their, their thought process, but you know, we've said not just here, um, you know, a lot of places people have said, even in D one, like give us more stuff for like a hardcore player, someone to grind, even if it's cosmetic, you know, emblems, mm -hmm. shaders, whatever, you know, just prestige. And it's almost like, they they like went too far with that and now it's like oh you did the prestige raid here's different colored armor like yeah we want that stuff at a grind but we don't want that to be like all we're getting do you know what i mean mm. you know they're giving us that just cosmetic stuff but it's just your basic rewards which it's kind of sad for me help. to say right now that i'm having i think more fun grinding with my buddies in pve than crucible and i was completely the other way around in d1 it's kind, of, it's kind of crazy yeah. just because, like, at a certain point, I get tired of Supremacy because I normally never play Supremacy, but since it's all RNG-based, the playlist is just, like, you can get it over and over and over again. It's just, like, to the point where I'm, like, oh, I kind of want to To be fair, Supremacy is not as terrible now because it's pretty <clears throat> much just Clash with more points. Yeah, it does go a little faster. Which but is, it's still... It oh, I know. Me wonder why it exists. Like, yeah, I, yeah, 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 that's what I, I was just about to say that. Just like, objective mode. You know, give me some kind of, I don't know, like King of the Hill or... I, I think mean, I think Countdown's actually, great. Like, King of the Hill. Oh, I love Countdown. Uh, yeah, I that's can, what I mean. Like, they got countdown, that one. That's perfect. It's only be Countdown because survival... Yeah, I, I, I was playing a match. It was like one of my first matches uh, this past weekend in, in Trials. And uh, I played a team, and they would uh, they would they would get a pick on uh, like some of the people who were, who were helping, and they would run to the corner of the map, and they would sit there with Midas, and like it was legitimately very very hard to play these people um, because like the rounds are so much shorter, and you because there's no like automatic overtime, so whichever you know team has like more lives it was like life advantage wins. Yep. the life advantage really frustrated me oh, because that. people would just run they would just run they would get a kill they would just run yep. they're just running in circles and i i just it just made me haze survival so much <laughs> yep, <laughs> give me cool. countdown just give me countdown i love countdown i do really like survival. Complaining about that <clears throat> but yeah like that was actually my very first game of trials uh pc pc trials survivor was a team that just kind of chilled on the outside. Once they had one one life more than us, they would just dodge us. I'm just like, please. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and that's and that's it's particularly frustrating because like that is like the worst of the Destiny Two meta is mm -hmm. that hyper passive play where you're just sitting in a group and you know you don't have enough tools to really do anything because you know grenades are really long cooldown and if, if you don't grab that that power ammo then you're just kind of screwed especially because you're only getting usually like one super match anyway so you know your impact for like the length of the match is really uh you know few and far between yeah well uh i'm gonna switch the conversation here and move to some community questions since we've been talking d2 for a while here we don't want to keep triple too long uh, but I know that we do have a lot of questions, so we'll just go ahead and jump to those for a little bit, and yeah, see how things go. Hove, are you uh, you ready for us here? I'm ready. The first one, this is a real serious one. Uh, it's from Gray. 
Uh, it says, how much does Sir Demetrius inspire you as a player, YouTuber, and on Twitch? And then uh, somebody named Sawyer said, yeah, Triple, how much do I inspire you? Mm. You know, that's, uh, that's an excellent question. And I, have to, <laughs> I have to say that I am incalculably inspired Ooh. by Big Sir words. Demetrius in, in that – he gives me uh, a benchmark for you know how not to behave and how not to uh, YouTube and Twitch and just generally comport myself. Um, you know, I think I think he's helped me become a better you know help me become my best self just because <laughs> he's out here being a clown <laughs> and uh, generally a doofus. So very inspirational. Love it. All right, we got two different people ask. Uh, Asriel Speaks and Gobble Gobble Life. Uh, always wondered, why triple? I understand not solo, but no quadruple or quintuple. I think I just answered the question. If not, why three? Um, I, I could not tell you. I, I was <laughs> trying to come up with a name, right, as we always do yeah. initially. And I'm just trying to, like, you know, I don't want a bunch of X's or brackets or underscores. Not to disparage anyone who has it, of course, but just for me. I was like, I wanted something that was clean and that wasn't taken. Especially you know, for Brandon. Uh, you got it easy. Right. How many years ago now, you know, I can't even imagine trying to make a name these days. Mm -hmm. Gaming so much bigger. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just I came up with that. I don't remember. There was no particular reason. But I will tell you, after I did so... Um, I did see, quickly people took uh, double rec, single rec, quadruple rec. Uh -huh. Every variation is taken. So they're out there. They're just not, they're just not triple rec. So. They're, they're not they're not me. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That reminds me of like it, it, searching for a gamer tag kind of reminds me of like whenever we were younger. And I don't know if any of y'all have ever been in like a rock band or any kind of musical band but whenever you're looking for a band name it's always like well what url isn't taken you know and, and we'll take that name <laughs> right oh i you know you hear stories of people who would like just base their name off whatever like the auto generated suggestion is oh. you know because you know i uh, pashi uh his he his name was like i think he was on xbox and clicking like the recommended name whatever and it, it came up like something poshy and then he just made you know, wtf is poshy yeah. you know, what, what is this and then there you go so hey that, that's one way to do it that's amazing all right uh the gaming study i have a question do you watch your pvp gameplay for improvement purposes i was thinking just like a football player watches tape how important is recording for yourself um I wouldn't say that I, I really watch my own gameplay. You know, if I was like competing, right? If I was like playing tournaments or something and I really, you know, wanted to improve and, you know, analyze my game, I probably would do that. But, you know, just in general, you know, as a streamer, it's not something that I do. But yeah, that it's to people, I, I have actually recommended that on many occasions because I think it is important whether it's just you trying to become a better player yourself or you know you are trying to improve your own stream and just watch it and you know as from try to put yourself as a as a viewer and be like you know how can i improve it you know maybe it's you know the way i speak or the levels of my audio or whatever i think it's important to uh to do that but um yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't say i do it personally but again if if you want to it's it can really help you uh, and then you can try to compare that to, to maybe some some good footage of, of you know someone that you watch that you think is is better and try to learn from that. And I've actually um, talked to some people in my community who exactly were looking for that advice. They're like, you know, I'm struggling with my game. I want to you know try to reach that next level. You know, what do I do? And uh, they they sent me some of their footage, and we just kind of went over it and just like examined some you know encounters, like you know what could maybe have you you done differently here, or are you being too aggressive or too passive and just little things like that um are certainly uh certainly tools to uh to improve your game yeah for sure i can attest to a lot of that too as far as like just watching your own footage because a lot of times i'll do that after i had like a, a good night of playing trials or something like that just watching through some of the footage and just being like oh man that was a cool play but it would have been so much cooler if i would have done this move right here just a little bit better and if you're like wanting to improve it's one of the best things yeah. i've ever done to improve my gameplay there you go. I think I've tried to do it, and then I just remember, like, I'll get to a point, and I'll go, oh, is this where I did that cool thing? 
no, it's not. And I'll like keep waiting for that to happen, and I forget that I'm watching for a reason. Yeah, I'm real bad at that. I just can't do that. I can't critique myself like that because then, like, I'm in my own mind saying, "Man, why? <laughs> You're so dumb. It's like, oh, you better you, than you, this. They served it up on a silver platter, and, you, <laughs> and then you did this. Like, you could have sniped <laughs> him, but then you." ran up to him to try to get a cool melee or something uh, that guy was standing still when you missed his head with your sniper rifle <laughs> i tried to do a drag on a standstill <laughs> like, what am I <laughs> yeah i can't i don't know i just i cringe at my own plays i can't do that <clears throat> all right uh rudy boy tv what is your biggest inspiration at the moment to keep doing what you do biggest inspiration is it's probably my probably my my community, right? Like the people who are, are there supporting me, you know, every day, um, whether it's just in the stream or it's, you know, people that I've become friends with outside of the stream now as well, people that help me run the channel, like my mods and such. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've made some some really uh, serious friendships and that's been something that I've, I've really, um, you know, something that's impacted my life in, in a significant way. So it, it's it's that, it's like, the, the kind of the stream has taken on a life of its own, right? It, it's it's just beyond something that I'm doing. It's something that other people have turned into something greater. And now I'm a, I'm just like a part of it as well. Like I'm kind of just along for the ride, you know, in a sense. So it's, uh, it's something that I, I'm really enjoying kind of like playing some other games as well and just, you know, messing around with stuff, meeting other people and um, yeah, you know, I, you know, I think it's important. You have to, you have to enjoy what you do. And uh, I think that's maybe some of the reasons that I've taken time off, you know, over the past couple of years, because I didn't want to burn myself out. And I didn't want to reach a point where I'm like, hey, you know, streaming is a chore, mm -hmm. right? And, and I know that's like maybe a little silly, you know, hey, you're playing video games and you know, how bad can it be? But, you know, it's like as a, as a broadcaster, it's a, it's a lot of like mental health stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're not... If you're not feeling it, your stream will notice and uh, it, it'll rub off on them. So you always want to be in a good mood. And, you know, so sometimes recently, oh, my gosh, I've been I've been consumed by the salt. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then, you know, I, I try to, you know, I try to keep it in check. But, you know, it's like, hey, I, I don't I wouldn't want to tune in right now. It, yes, I know there's like an aspect that's like, hey, it's funny and you know you can bounce, and you know you're there just like being entertained by it. But you know at a certain point, you know you don't you don't want to listen to someone that's just not so much being negative. It's just like they're not really enjoying what they're streaming. So, yeah. uh, but but it's not even like oh, hey, Destiny is just a bad game. I don't like it. It's just mostly like I'll be like at the end of a really long stream, I'll just be tired, right? And it's just like you're playing worse, and you're just like fuck so <laughs> uh, yeah. and i think it's you know people have to realize you know even someone who may not stream at all ever there's always some time where you're like i don't want to hang out with my friends i don't want to do anything i just want to sit around and hang out by myself and when you're streaming you're not by yourself you know yeah. you have to entertain you have to keep up conversation and everything and sometimes you just don't feel like it which is me like every day which is why i don't stream <laughs> anymore um <laughs> couple more and then we got a, just a, a couple quick fast silly ones uh, Azrael speaks in chat says with how you feel and I am assuming that many others and I am feel the same about the current state of destiny is I am going to help with the comp scene and I would assume that's after private matches type stuff mm. yeah uh, I think there's a lot there's a huge part, you know, part of that community was you know like hey destiny 2 is coming out you know we'll have private matches we'll have ranked you know we just assume like of course we'll have these things mm -hmm. um and then we can just you know really take this game to the next level but um it is good that we we do know that we're getting private matches like in a general window of time and uh i, I hope that it's it's going to be enough to like to get people you know reinvigorated and uh and make something um for that side because i know like i think there's room for destiny to succeed in a competitive sense i don't think it's going to reach some esport level with destiny 2 especially now without dedicated servers but i think that you know destiny 1 demonstrated how uh how much fun destiny can be to watch in that kind of uh setting 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I would love to see it succeed and, and, you know, realize a lot of that potential that it clearly has. So yeah, we'll, we'll do as much as we can. And I, I, you know, reading my, you know, clan chat every day, it's just like there's people like, Hey, you know, there's just, I want to play this game, but it's just, there's no reason to right now. It's like, we, we've been waiting for this. You know, I don't feel like playing other games. Like I want to play destiny. I want yeah. to do that. So uh, they're, you know, they're hanging in there. So hopefully that's, cool. well, that's also because you're a um, bungee show and bungee pays you to say all these things, well, right? Of course. Of course. And, <laughs> and 10 minutes ago you were super negative and never had anything. In, in the same the sentence, you can be called a, <laughs> a shill and uh, you know, just a negative Nancy. So, <laughs> it's impressive. It's a skill. That's why you're a big streamer. Is, uh, what's, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, I had one more serious one, then a couple, like I said, goofy ones. I just can't find it now. All right. Uh, there it is. Uh, why did you choose to make Hunter meta? I guess that's not a serious one, but... <laughs> Oh, Hunter is uh, is is such such a high level subclass in D two. I, I know that when I pop my Arc Strider, I'm getting at least you know, <laughs> four to eight kills on average. At least um, two t- full team you know, wipes, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah I I routinely least... beat beat warlocks in one v ones because you know I'm just I always have my health up. It's great. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, <laughs> I, I like I I think I I think Golden Gun is a good super. And I think Gunslinger is like pretty much fine. Like it mm-hmm. it doesn't have the strongest neutral game, but its super is it has the potential to shut down enemy supers in one hit with that uh with that one tree. So you know I think Night Stalker and Arc Strider could use some tweaks to to bring them up, and then in general maybe the dodge. Could also see some improvements, but uh, I I genuinely enjoy uh, playing Gunslinger, but I, I I would not say I wouldn't say it's the meta. I think you could have a team comp that incorporates like a Gunslinger, but it's uh, yeah. Hunters have uh, been on the struggle. Like, well, they actually have. I think it's like there's there's Gauntlets and Leg Armor that say they have recovery on them, but there's no recovery. Oh, yeah, I've, I've noticed. That. I think that's. Hmm. I don't think it's. A, intentional but it's still like hey it's been two months wait really you, yes like, yeah, yeah it's a survivalist oh, armor it's got it's got mobility and uh, resilience nodes on it for some reason so make Perfect. hunters great again please yes yeah. yes <laughs> get it yes. yes the, the most frustrating <laughs> thing for me for hunters is when you're playing void and you shoot the shadow shot and you hit a super i hit a i hit another arc strider actually just today and like he took and the time that the arrow hit him, he took three more lunges at me and killed me, and then he got out of his super. I was like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah." Well, you, a- you could, uh, you know, you could make a full five course meal and take a shower by the time like you shoot your arrow to when it finally lands, <laughs> and then decides to activate, and then decides to tether, and uh, it, it's it's rough. Like especially the, like the one arrow not killing on a direct hit, even yeah. the one, not the quiver, just the, that the just one old arrow. Inside, man. And it's just like, oh no, it's, what it are you doing? It hurts so much. I would say make Tether great again, but Tether wasn't really great to begin with. Well, Tether, just, it, but little did we know, <laughs> just when Tether was, you know, comparatively great. So much better. It was so than what we good. Get yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, oh, I, 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 I don't know. Too. I don't know. It, it's just, it, it's only perplexing because it's like you look at the other subclass and you're like huh but they have all this good stuff and you know are these really you know on the same level like <laughs> it's hard to, hard to know but you know it, the other frustrating thing is like we haven't gotten a, any kind of balance patch yet so we don't yeah. know like what, what are what are their you know thoughts on where things are it, you know maybe we're all on the same page and they just you know haven't done anything about it yet but i, I hope they take a look at that and and flinch um yeah. And, and we'll see what happens. I'm really curious what that first balance patch is going to be, like the very first one, because that's a good tell of like, you know, how much they're going to change with these things. So Yeah. I think we just need an infinite shadow shot glitch again, and everything will be fine. Yeah. <laughs> this time we won't even be, angry. be usable. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. A uh, couple, couple uh, goofy rapid fire ones here, and then we'll, we'll call it. Um, this one could be taken seriously, but that would be too long of a discussion, but uh, Jay Ramos asks, who do you think was the best streamer slash YouTuber in Destiny 1 PvP? 
Destiny 1. That is a... Choose your answer wisely. <laughs> That's what I mean. Don't take this one too seriously. Best. I see, you know, best is like, it's hard. It's like, are we talking like <laughs> best PvE streamer, best PvP streamer? Are we talking like sweats? Are we talking trials? You know, there's so many different things <laughs> there. But I, you know, I will say that, you know, I, I really enjoyed watching, you know, the various uh, people like Slayerage doing uh, you know, yeah. solo challenges Great. and stuff in PvE. Like, and, and to this day, he's, you know, he's an inspiration and he, and he's For real. There. He, one of the, the great voices in the community. So uh, I think that was cool. I remember watching, um, you know, some of the, some of the raid, like the first raid attempts. You know, I would go back and watch the VODs to see what other teams were like. And I, I just, I love that. I love the magic of doing a raid for the first time. And, you know, yeah. same thing with Leviathan. I, I, that's just one of the best experiences for Destiny. Um, now for PvP side, uh, I I enjoyed watching uh, I enjoyed watching A. Gabriel because mm. you know, I was not a, a great Titan player by any means, but he was just you know he's the best. He, he was like he was like playing a different game, yeah. and uh, I just I loved watching just to pure entertainment. Super super good player, and I think that's kind of the draw a lot of other people had too watching people because they were doing things that you know that you couldn't do at least not yeah. yet and that that was serving as like inspiration whether you wanted to become that good or you just wanted to you know appreciate it vicariously through them um and uh and then it was is awesome to see crafty come from basically you know nothing and then now he is like he is the de facto trial streamer and uh you know he he does it better than anyone that's cool. Yeah. With uh, you, man. Andrew Edge, how do you sleep at night knowing you're dodging streams? Hashtag Kappa. <laughs> I sleep very well. I sleep very well. But I know. This is what I tell myself. Every, every day that I dodge is just, I'm putting that life force into the next stream, making it that much better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the quality over quantity, my friend. But I, I, I do, I, you know, I, it's been a, it's been a very long year. Cause of course I moved out to Seattle earlier in the spring and, uh, I, I'm still not finished with things in my apartment and it's not because I'm procrastinating. It's just cause you know, I, I'm one person and you know, I had a lot of things I want to get done and now I'm finally like got my like actual final setup here finished. So like I'm starting to wind this down. I'll be able to just not worry about any of that stuff anymore. I can just focus on on streaming again. I, I do look forward to it. There's so many games. Like I have I have this like oh, backlog of just like so many games I've I've not played. And mm -hmm. uh, I definitely want to integrate that into uh, my schedule. Uh, just because yeah, yeah, I've you know I've some of my best streams have been like Monopoly. <laughs> and uh, more recently we played some Uno. Yeah. And I don't know why we had just the greatest time. So I, I, I love that. That's great. All right. And last one, uh, Darth Loki, is it difficult splitting your time between gaming and being the new monarchy faction rep? You know, it's definitely taught me a lesson in, uh, you know, time management. Uh, absolutely. You know, it's not easy out here. Uh, leading a faction and also <laughs> not streaming so uh you know i do my best uh, i hope you get uh the gear that you want this week <laughs> i had people <laughs> tweeting me they're like i've given you 300 tokens <laughs> you yet. and i'm just like oh, i'm sorry now do you but. see like because i know a lot of times when people think like oh you look like someone you're like no i don't do you see the resemblance resemblance yourself <laughs> I, I do. It's not like, hey, the first time I, I you know, I went and talked to the executor today, I was like, hey, that looks like me. <laughs> but I, I can totally, I can totally uh, see. I, I'm, I'm very flattered. <laughs> I, what I need to do is like, I need to get, I need to find someone to make me the full cosplay outfit. Yeah, like high quality, and then I can wear that to conventions. So or the Guardian God. God. Get, Get on it. The next Guardian God. God. We're oh, expecting we're you. Right. We actually, yeah. if, if, we were talking. If you're someone out there who knows someone or has possesses these skills, you know, get in contact with me because I will pay you to make it for me. Diabolical wench. I bet you she could do it. it. <clears throat> um, right. 
it was funny because we actually talked about before the episode with you being on. This wasn't planned this way, but being on during faction rallies, it would have been really funny to set it up where we interviewed you as, as an executor exec- Hideo about faction rallies <laughs> throughout the episode. But yeah, you know, I, I would have to. I'd have to do my homework, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even know what maybe. to ask. It, it would last for like five minutes, and then you'd just be in that costume <laughs> for no reason. Oh my gosh! Well, this is a perfect transition. That that's the last question, though, because we did You're welcome. have. Segways. The faction rally this week. And did y'all have y'all gotten any guns that you like from it? You know, they introduced some new stuff like Dead Orbit, SMG, or the Scout from there. I know a lot of the factions had a new Scout rifle, new Monarchy with the Sniper rifle. Did y'all get anything that y'all liked or y'all uh, try anything out? I haven't um, tried anything, but I did get things that I liked. I got the Dead Orbit submachine gun because it has high cow. And then I know that Guiding Star from Dead Orbit 2 is like distinct uh, for an auto. Yeah, so that guiding the tribe yet. Yeah, it's it's the only kinetic, like what is it, 720 RPM auto rifle? It's the only and it has high cal too. So uh I thought that was interesting, like maybe something to keep around for later, at least yeah. if the meta changes, because it's the only kinetic one like that. Yeah, I um I've it's, I only have two characters, so I pledge one, two, in monarchy, getting that gear, obviously, and then oh, yeah. one to future war call. And now I, I my goal is I have to get like my Titan done so then i can pledge to dead orbit and try to get all this because i haven't gotten all the gear yet i haven't even done that the token farm you know, <laughs> forbid. uh but uh yeah it seems like there's a, a like a pretty balanced amount of like you know things that are solid the new monarchy sniper seems like a standout i haven't yeah. gotten it my, myself yet but it's like fairly high impact it's got it snapshot happen. so I, I know i just let me just go back here <laughs> yeah. into the stack and uh, procure one <laughs> Uh, Procure. Right <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, quickly, when you said you only have uh, two characters, I know last time you were on, we had talked about that when PC came out, you'd probably move over there mostly. Have you completely moved away from console? Yes, I I have, and you know I I'm a little bit torn because I know like there's a big community on PS4 and you know, much of them of my own, um, but it, it's like the same thing, you know when you when destiny came out, there were people that were on PS3 and Xbox 360, but you know, over time they, they migrated to, you know, the newer stuff. And I think PC is kind of like that for me. Um, I want to be able to, uh, enjoy the game as much as possible and have like a really enjoyable stream to watch. And I think PC is that, uh, for sure. So I've, I've really been, it's, it's kind of breathed some new life into the game for me just playing on PC. So, um, Maybe maybe there'll be some like exclusive PlayStation stuff that I'll come back and you know try out. Maybe they'll have an God forbid they have a a, a new market or a, excuse me a, a Hawk Moon exclusive, you know <laughs> one day on that caliber. I would I would come back and, and use it, but uh, for now I'll probably be on PC. Yeah, the only thing I can think that you'll be missing out on so far that I know of is the Curse of Osiris has that new Crucible map that is just on the planet of titan in the solarium which is like that mm. the really cool looking place is like i want that crucible yeah. map so bad because that yeah. area is so freaking cool but other well, than that hopefully it uh hopefully it is good because that retribution map on ps4 is one of my like i it's one of the reasons actually that's the only reason i went to pc is because i knew i wouldn't have to play that map anymore <laughs> uh, it's just a freaking <laughs> hallway and it, it's a circle and it doors anyway don't get me started doors uh yeah doors. sorry for derailing the conversation lego but that was something no, no. i meant to ask earlier i was curious no it's perfect the only other thing i was going to add to the faction rally was i did get to play that new monarchy sniper and it feels awesome i don't know why but it just feels it feels like uh similar to like what a low impact one as far as like the speed of it but then it like hits pretty hard actually and so i i I really enjoyed it you get a lot of shots with it like five or six which feels really good um and then the only other thing was the scout rifle for dead orbit i don't know why not the dumb one we got last last time but the (laughs) super fast firing one that's a full auto one if you hit all headshots with that thing it kills super fast it's just the trick is getting those headshots. But for some reason, mm-hmm. I hated the other version of it, the other legendary. And this one, the Dead Orbit one model of it just feels really good. So I'd recommend at least trying it out if you got it. You know, don't just throw it in your vault right away. It's It's been fun to try out all these different weapons. That is one pro 
to the way that Destiny is right now is you can kind of try out different guns and not get severely punished for it in the Crucible. You can kind of have fun trying out different yeah, things. Yeah. And so yeah, I, 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 I am glad that they have like an event where it is always introducing something new, at least so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's just like, oh, hey, there's you know a new SMG to try or a new sniper to try. And I, I hope that they're able to maintain that over time because like. And let's face it, you know, getting getting new toys is one of the uh, the good parts Absolutely. and exciting things about Destiny. So, um, I am a child. So, yes. <laughs> um, I do want to so, ask uh, any of you guys. The I just got it as I was finishing. I haven't had a chance to use it. The Future War Cult sidearm. Does anyone know if it's any good? The the kinetic one, right? But yeah, because it has, it's kinetic, really. Mm -hmm. It has um, Zen Moment and High Caliber Rounds, which seems like a good idea to me. But it's the same fire rate as the minimum distance, which is garbage. So uh, I didn't know uh, if it was like the same archetype. So anybody? No, no I have not, not gotten it yet. But I'll, if it's I'll not last it. hope archetype sidearm, yeah, I just yeah, that's <laughs> burst yeah no, it's not a burst. Okay. But I saw Zen moment and high cal, and I was like, oh, that's a pretty good, you know, right? Yeah, uh, combination. Yeah. But I didn't get a chance to use it. So I, I haven't it. actually touched any of the faction stuff. I did like a raided a knife fall so far this week, which is weird because I never do those. Um, <laughs> well, that means you've done so as many what? nightfalls this week as I've done in D2. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are the cool kids saying to actually uh, try to go for? Like, what what are the, some <laughs> the of the cool kids? I am, yeah, what, what am I missing out on? I mean, the scout <laughs> rifle from Future War Cult is uh, pretty good, people are saying. Um, yeah, I, but... I do like that. Yeah, that, I mean, that and there's a submachine gun for Future War Cult 2 that might be cool. Yeah, but you I could switch the RPMs on, right? People are saying that the hand oh, cannon from New Monarchy is really crisp on PC, and I got to play around mm. it with it for a little bit, and it did feel really snappy on PC, so that hand cannon might be the big go-to. Yeah, right? uh, New Monarchy, the hand cannon, it's an energy hand cannon, so that one's good. Uh, New Monarchy Sniper, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the Future War Cult Scout and uh, SMG are very yes. solid. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's that, that Dead Orbit Auto Rifle. And then Dead Orbit Hand Cannon is the... the oh, Dire Promise. Promise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I keep hearing so, about that one. Like, like each each oh. faction has, has some, some good stuff, so it's nice. worth getting. All right, when you said on PC, it's crispy on PC. That actually um, just popped up into something like in my mind. Uh, triple. Have you been jumping mm -hmm. back and forth between mouse and keyboard and uh, controller on PC yet to uh, mess I, with any of the feels to the weapons? Because it's kind of crazy. Not, I have not. I have not <laughs> tried that yet. I, what I wanted to do was do a console challenge, and so I would play on controller, and I would uh, cap my frame rate to thirty, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh my try, to, try to go try to go flawless. But, um, <laughs> oh no, wow! I I, I I don't know. I mean, obviously, things are tuned uh, for mouse and keyboard on PC, and so like a lot of things have less recoil. Yeah, it's actually kind of crazy. Like, biggest difference is hand cannons, of course. Like hand cannons mm -hmm. on console are just—they are so bad. It actually is one of the things that like really turned me off to Crucible because I love hand cannons. I, it's yeah. what Same. one of the reasons i really got into crucible in the first place because like hey this is how many games out there have like a primary you know revolver type weapon like that is so cool i love that and uh you know not being able to use them on console really made me sad but then now they are they're very good on pc but i don't feel op to me because i you know i was running some pulse rifles i was running some auto rifles i, I was mixing up my loadouts and i felt like everything is you know pretty pretty good um in a relative sense so uh, i don't know if like on pc the controller like you know tuning is any different than console but uh, i really hope that they're able to bring up some of the stuff on console because it's uh there's there's a huge difference yeah playing mainly on controller on pc like i've messed with mouse and keyboard a little bit but playing mainly on controller i've noticed that hip firing is something that has stayed a lot better on pc than it has oh, on yeah. console and when i switch back over still using a controller on the ps4 it's like noticeable i'm like oh my gosh i, I can't hit fire like in this game like i have to aim down the sights but like, on pc yeah. you don't really have to as a much. couple of the comparisons is Hip fire on SMGs versus console and mouse and keyboard and uh, one one hand cannon. I completely disliked it on console was the sunshot 
Uh, I yeah. thought it was really disappointing and cruisable. It wasn't that great at all. On mouse and keyboard, you can just murder people from so far away with it. It feels amazing. Like I'm having a blast with Sunshine. There's, there's not like a single handkin on PC that I, I don't like. I just I love yeah. them. I just have yeah, I just it, cycle through a different one every game. Just say, hey, awesome. the other one shoots fast, this one shoots slow, and we're just having a great time. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a big difference because again, it is like the amount of recoil. Mm -hmm. Recoil is like it's night and day difference, but also the fact that I feel that well, I know for sure the the aim assist aim for assist, his yep. on D two for controller is very low if compared to Destiny one because I actually did that um, if when when D two had come out on console the, it was down for maintenance one day so I just went back and was like all right well let's play some uh, Destiny one we'll do some private matches or whatever and it was it was just shocking the night and day difference between the just the, the handling of these weapons and the aim assist and and you know simple fact is like you need aim assist you need a certain amount of aim assist to help you aim with a controller and if it's too low you're just you're not it's not about skill you're just it, you can't hit anything it's not fun especially when it's different between different types of weapons so um hopefully they can show them some love on on the controller for sure yeah that is one of my favorite things about PC, though, is just the variety of weapons, like people using different hand cannons. And like you were saying, other things are viable, too. And so then you've got mm -hmm. people playing mouse and keyboard or controller on PC. And so people are like utilizing different play styles based off of which one of those they're playing with. I just feel like you see a lot more variety on the PC version than you. Yeah, do yeah, 100 percent. And I would I would like to say, you know, full credit to the, the team that has yeah. worked on that, because well, I, I just. You know, and I want to. I want to be intellectually honest, right? So, having complained about balance for you know eons, uh, overall weapon balance on on D two is especially PC side feels great. Mm -hmm. And yes, like I think sniper is a little underpowered, and you know I think high cal and flinch is a problem. Uriel's makes me scream, <laughs> and, and so there, there are still issues. But in a general sense, I I don't think we've had better weapon balance like yeah. memory so yeah. it's it's great and um i'm really enjoying that totally well real quick i'm just gonna finish up we got the this week at bungie this week there wasn't too much in there um but i just wanted to hit on just like maybe three of these points here uh they ha mentioned a 4k update for playstation pro and xbox one x that's coming out um so that's cool i did it isn't something that like really pops out to me i'm glad they're doing a little bit what i really would have liked to see is like hey we've optimized it for you know a little like a wider field of view or something like that something mm -hmm. that the yeah. pc got like those are the kind of things that i would have field of view is is yeah. such a huge oh. difference oh man yeah. and i know there are some console games that let you do that so it's, it's curious Curious to, to know, but then again, I know like sometimes the, the frame rate struggles as it is, so I don't know. Yeah, it's probably yeah. a, just you know a limitation, but maybe Crucible. I think, hey, let me change it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there aren't a bunch of enemies running around. Please. You're good there. Yeah, come on, we're so, all devs. We know this is possible. <laughs> so there is that. We'll we'll see how good it looks. You know, when it comes out, we can't really say much on it now. A lot of this stuff in the TWAB is just, hey, this is coming. It's not really anything that has happened yet. Like the next thing, the Clarion call, which is like the next event sort of thing happening for Destiny. It's just mm -hmm. double XP. Uh, starts November seventeenth, and it's just when you like play with your fire team or with your clan. Clan, uh, clan, yeah. Clan, yeah. So that'll be interesting. So I assume it's like so we can get bright engrams faster than yes yeah which so is that, kind of that, nice it is, it is good because now i don't have to spend silver i can just wait and, know <laughs> exactly. <what that's> like. <laughs> and it's at the end of a season like that's right before you know december is kind of yeah. december 5th is when the second season starts and all this stuff is going away so if we have a little event to boost how much we can get you that can free stuff some of that stuff yeah yeah or try that'll to. be pretty nice i still don't have a ghost coast what? <laughs> Still don't have a ghost ghost. Damn. Just wait till yeah, next year. Hope. Damn is right. I spent fifty dollars in silver that day. Really? Oh, oh man. That's all I wanted. It's the only time I wanted a ghost ghost. I got like three of the stupid devil, devil ghosts. Ghost. He sucks. <laughs> Well, the last thing I just wanted to mention is they talked about the social guided game stuff. Uh, and basically, it was a lot of stuff that they just acknowledge what we talked about earlier, just problems with in-game chats and audio stuff that's missing in that, hey, they're working on these. They didn't really have 
any solutions to talk about. They just talked about how there's new guided game stuff coming, like for the Nightfall and Raid for Curse of Osiris. But there wasn't anything specific as far as, you know, any sort of fixes that are coming to any of the problems that we talked about. And they just said Emote Will is coming soon. They want it in really bad. So I'm, I'm excited mm-hmm. for that. But it's just, you know, stuff that's coming soon still. Right. Uh, last thing is they just talked about, uh, you know, next week we're getting um, the streams for Curse of Osiris. Uh, oh, right. and so we'll see how those things come. Uh, Trimble, I'm curious for you, um, you know, in reveal streams before, we've kind of gone back and forth on how much information we actually want to see from these streams. Some of us are a little more reserved than the other. Where are you at with, like, how much they should show off for this DLC? Like, they've got to sell it, but at the same time, you don't want to see everything. Yeah, I mean, you never want to, never want to spoil the entire experience. Um, and at this point, I, I would say that like, you want to show people enough, like, because there are people that are on the fence right now about staying with Destiny, or yeah, people who've already kind of like stepped away. Um, so you you want to bring those people back, and you want to keep mm-hmm. those players, and then you want to entice new players. So like, this is a holiday season coming up, and. You know that's it's going to be prime time for, um, you know, bringing in an influx of, of new guardians. So, for sure, uh, they 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 need to answer some important questions. Like they they need reasons for people to keep playing beyond their like you know their weekly reset, you know, tasks, which you know doesn't take very long. And without this, they say raid content. <laughs> yeah, so something that they have said before. I. I I'm trying not to be too pessimistic, but I feel like they're just they're just they want to say the word raid because they know <laughs> if they don't, and there's people are going to be like, oh, no raid, you know, uh, House of Wolves all over again. Um, so some people have, have said that maybe it's like the, there's another encounter that's going to be added to Leviathan raid, yeah, or something to do with that. Which I'm sure you know if that that could be, I'm mean, certainly better than nothing. But I don't that there needs to be other stuff for the PVE side. Um, there needs to be some kind of replayable content that is you know you can grind. And 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 I know people like some people associate the word grind with being a negative, but you want something that you can keep playing and working at and feel like you're being rewarded. And I think like heroic playlists uh, in past Destiny One were a good example of that. So maybe they can inject some life into uh, the playlist system or add a whole new activity. You know, my dream is some kind of uh, firefight board mode. Yes. Uh, oh, that would I be have, so I good. have to believe one day we'll get it. Please. I don't know when, but I, I want it so much. And uh, and then I don't know. Like I, I, So we're not going to get private matches. They haven't even said the word ranked. So that's a long shot. I don't know if you know a couple PVP maps and some kind of new mode are going to be enough. Like I think, I think it's more of like quality of life things that are going to make a bigger impact for yeah. players rather Absolutely. than just oh here's just a new thing. Um, and of course yeah. we'll, get, we'll get new guns and gear and, and that'll all be hunky dory. So hopefully, you know, I, I really want it to be good. And I you know wait with bated breath for the streams yes yes well uh triple thanks so much for coming on this week man we really really appreciate you coming on and taking the time to just talk with us about all this thanks for thanks for doing this man i I would come on every week and do this so (laughs) love love you guys so we were looking for a fifth host (laughs) (laughs) a lot of podcasts Oh, well, guys, this has been Rezocast episode 59. We thank you so much for hanging out with us, whether you're on stream or on iTunes, Google, whatever you're listening to us on. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. This is Lego, a.k.a. Legole Flash. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube at Legole Flash. Hove, where can they find you? Same thing. Twitter, Twitch. Never mind. Not YouTube. Um, Hove 76, HOV 76. I do have a YouTube. You can go look at it, but there won't be anything there. Uh, Triton? Oh, actually, I thought you were finally going to whack it and not, not mention it at all after, like, a year of mentioning that you had YouTube with nothing on I it. I made a video, like, I mean, six or eight months ago. Whatever. He's trying to build up his base, so when he finally decides to do YouTube, they're yeah. going to be like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, there we go. I can't believe it. Well, I, I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, I tried to do the same thing with my seven-month hiatus, and I think when I posted the video recently, mm. it just reminded people, oh, I really wanted to unsub. So I think that was, like, that was my <laughs> <laughs> but you can't find me in all those same places. Triton, please, please being PLZ, all one word. How about you, Mana? 
Uh, you can find me on mainly Twitch, at the Manigator, uh, Twitter, the Manigator, and the same problem. Yeah, is... wait a second. Who's made a more recent YouTube video, me or Mana? Because you... fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it may have been a seven, eight months since yeah. I've also uploaded, but I do have a YouTube channel, and you could visit it. But, you know, I'll, I'll have the Manigator. How about you, Triple Rick? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, mostly on Twitch when I'm actually streaming and <laughs> Twitter at Triple Rec. Uh, and then actually also on YouTube, uh, Triple Rec. I, I basically, my YouTube is just like a sellout channel and I just do like gear videos and stuff. But I, I actually, openings. I'm trying to do now. I want to do like, I want to just upload like, like some highlights from my streams. Like I wanted to do like really yeah. long ones and I'm just like, okay, if I'm mm. just a really good clip, I'll just upload it and then just be like, that's my archive until Twitch decides to like really, you know, take YouTube head on and, and maybe add more tools for that. But uh, yeah, we'll see. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's where you can find me. Awesome. Well, you can also find more about Team Resolute at teamresolute.com or on Twitter at Team Resolute. Really appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight. And that's it for Resocast episode 59. Until next time, guys. GG. 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 Maybe re?